Good afternoon, Rod. Here's your machine, the Breville Oracle in silver. Um, as you've seen from the photos, it's in very good condition um, and it's in even better condition on the inside. I've just finished doing the cleaning and the service. It's immaculate. Um, it's, it's barely used as we spoke, as you, as you saw in the description. It's only, I think, about three, three and a half months uh, worth of use. So it's uh, really um, close to new, I would say. There are some light scratches here. You know, as you would expect from getting your cups in and out uh, as you use it, that's normal and it's inevitable actually. So, um, I will give the machine a full wipe down just before I pick up, just to be super safe. Um, so, the machine is on now. Usually, it takes about five minutes to turn on to reach temperature. Uh, this is the main menu, and I'll go into the latte. We're going to make a latte in this video, just quickly demoing the machine. Um, I like to begin my mornings with a blank shot, so running hot water through the system just to warm up the insides, warm up the handle, and or actually warm up the cup as well. Um, you can do this once or twice, it's really up to you. Um, and it's actually good because it will clean up any um, sort of oils that are in the machine, so I recommend it. So you can select, here, here's your grind. Here's your um, brew, you can select that single or double. Hot water, if you want hot water from the, from the hot water tap, very handy. And this is your milk. So, obviously this being a dual boiler, you can do both the coffee and the milk at the same time. So if you just touch. Here's your selection, temperature and texture. The, the default is, I think, 65 degrees and five 5 out of 10 in terms of the texture. So I'm going to stop it there. Half the cup sh should be fine. Um, it's running hot water through the system and everything. Um, okay, so I'm going to pick, take this out. And before grinding, it's very important to dry the water filter. Otherwise, the, the coffee grounds will clump up and make a mess. It won't be proper. So I'm just going to dry it with a tissue or a towel. Uh, next step is to just put in the handle over here and twist it to the right, or touch the button to grind up to you. The grind size at the moment is at 24, uh, one being the finest, and I think it goes up all the way up to 45. So 24 is roughly halfway in the range. Um, it's this dial here, and you should only change it when the machine is actually grinding. So I can't make it finer now, because it will actually crush the beans between the blades. So it's better to spin this only when the grinder is spinning. Um, yeah, so 24 I found to be a good number for the beans that I'm using. I'm using the Aldi beans. They're cheap and they're quite good. Um, if you find your coffee too runny, you would make this one or two numbers finer and try again. If your coffee is too slow and too little in quantity, then you would increase the number here by one or two, try again. Um, most of the time for why it's runny, it's either because the number is too large on the grind size or if the beans are too old or if you buy lower quality bean usually they they have less pressure and less um, oils built up so um, usually old or stale beans will be really runny and they will lack crema so this, this is number 24 The beans are a few weeks old at this stage, but they should do fine. They should do well. Um, I'm gonna inspect. So there's always gonna be a little bit of debris. Just twist, just, um, flip it upside down just to remove any debris. This is what it should look like. Um, nice and flat. Obviously the machine does all the work for you. You don't have to measure or select the dose or tamp it down. It'll do everything for you. That's the beauty of this machine. Um, if, you, if, you, if you find the coffee here too much, you can actually undo the tamper assembly here and increase the dose. Like for example, this is, I think this is 22 grams of coffee. But if you want to reduce that to 20 or maybe 19, you can actually um, increase the tamper length from the inside. There's a YouTube tutorial on how to do that. Uh, this should be okay for now. If you like your coffee strong, keep it as is, I would suggest. Um, I'm going to put this on the group head. Twist it all the way. Um, 
dead center is fine. Um, if it's not dead center, if it's a bit to the left, it might leak, obviously, because when you screw it in, you put pressure on the seal. Um, and you can sometimes push it all the way to the right, but I wouldn't force the machine. So if it's tight at dead center, I would keep it there, no issues. Uh, but the machine is not too picky about that. Um, okay, so my cup is here, it's nice and hot now. I will dump the water and start making my coffee. Just gonna add a little bit of sugar. So water. Just gonna add a little bit of sugar. If you like hazelnut, sugar, syrups, I would recommend adding them at this stage just to kind of help it mix with the espresso as it goes down. So I'll be doing, I'll be doing the milk and coffee separately just so that we can talk about what's, what's happening. More so with the espresso to be honest. So with the espresso, you want um, the coffee to be nice and smooth, nice and controlled flow, not too runny like a river, not too slow, it shouldn't be, it should not be black drops. Um, and if you want to be consistent or picky about your coffee, you can grab a scale and measure the dose. So the dose of the hand was about 20 grams. So uh, the usual rule is to double the 20, so 40 in terms of coffee. So if I put 20 in coffee grounds, I want to get about 40 in liquid espresso. So that's the general rule. You don't have to follow that. You can make your coffees as long or as, as short as you want. You can actually change the settings um, in, in the menus and make your own cup. So if you like your coffees a certain length, if you like your milk to be a certain temperature, you can actually make that uh, a custom cup and name it under your name. Uh, you can also add hot water. So if you want to convert this espresso into a long black or Americano, you can do that because the hot water tab is actually right here. So when you have your mug, the hot water will go into the same cup as these two spouts. So it's like an all-in-one setup. You don't have to move your cup anywhere. You don't have to do anything. So it's quite good. Um, here's my sugar. I'm going to measure the output now with the scale. I've zeroed my scale. And, uh, the, I believe the double setting would will, will brew for 30 seconds. So in that 30 seconds, I want to be getting 40 grams of coffee. Let's see how we go. If it's too runny, obviously I would change the ground size. If it's too slow, I would um, increase the ground size. So that's how I know I'm on the right ground size is if I get the right coffee in the right amount of time. That's nice. It's a little bit too runny, but it's fine. I guess my big of my my bag of beans is getting a little bit old, so I think I'll stop it right there. At Twenty-four seconds. Okay, that that looks like about forty grams. Could be wrong. That's forty-five. Okay, so from this we've learned that this is a drinkable shot. So it did forty about forty forty-five grams in twenty-four seconds. Um, so the next step is to, I guess, bring this down two numbers from 24 to 22 and try again. Um, it could be just my beans, honestly. Then these are a few weeks old, or old as we said. Um, but yeah, as you saw, the, the, the flow is nice and smooth at the beginning. You have a good colored body and you have a, a nice crema on top. So it's actually quite good uh, for what it is. Um, if you buy your beans fresh from the roasters or from the cafe, your shots will be even better. Um, because obviously freshly roasted coffee will be uh, leaps and bounds better tasting than supermarket beans. And these are supermarket beans. Um, if you can afford those. So that's my espresso. Um, obviously with this machine, you would have the milk and the espresso done at the same time. And you would be pouring the milk at this stage. But my, I'm going to leave my cup sitting on the left here. I've already filled my milk jug with, um, with cold full cream milk. So try your best to use the cold milk um, 
Obviously, it will work with other types of milk, but I, found, I find um, cow's milk to be the best. It's default settings. I'm just going to purge purge the steam on. Whoops. I'm going to purge the steam on um, to remove any hot water that's built up, um, especially as I've just turned on the machine right now. I'm going to push this down, try to center the cup. And I've put, I've put the milk all the way to this spout line here, maybe just a little bit below the spout. You can see that clearly just here. So touch. Here's my shot. And then I'm gonna um, rinse the water filter using the machine's hot water filter, using the machine's uh, um, hot water actually. So I'll press the blue button. This will clean and flush the blue pad. And I'm going to also use that water to rinse my uh, water filter. So it's a nice little step. Two birds on stone. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, now that this is nice and clean, I'm going to have to take this out and clean it as well. So make sure you have a wet towel handy. This is important because if you don't clean it, it'll make a mess and it'll stick to the steam wand. I'm uh, talking about the milk here. So I'm going to pull my milk jug and then I'm going to quickly wipe the steam wand with a damp cloth. This is important because uh, it will stick there, the milk will stick on the very hot steam wand. It gets really hot, obviously. Um, so I'm going to wipe it nice and clean. And then when you push it down, it'll actually purge again. So it will clean itself. It'll purge steam five times to clear the holes of the wand from any milk. Uh, this is a very, very smart feature, I would say, because usually uh, if you don't do this, the, the holes will get clogged and you can't really steam unless you unclog it, which is a bit of a headache. Um, yeah, so keep the machine nice and dry, nice and clean. It'll care for you if you care for it. And that's a latte. Let me just show you how I do the milk. So I'm going to knock it down if I see any bubbles. And then kind of swirl it around like that. Can do this in the air on the table. Then this is very nice and smooth. Yeah, this is closer to a to a uh, cappuccino actually. So if you want to reduce the bubbles, you would re reduce the texture here. If you want to increase the bubbles or the um, aeration, you would increase the number here. Um, so here's the latte. This is a very lousy attempt at latte art. I'm not really good at latte art, but this machine is more than capable of doing latte art. Let me show you. Here it is. Um, it always tastes great, um, despite the looks. Um, yeah, so it's a nice little machine. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. Any issues, any uh, concerns, I'm always available to help. And I uh, hope you enjoy the machine. It's a good catch, I would say. And um, I will see you soon. Uh, the only thing I would say about this machine, um, try to keep up your maintenance as much as you can. So when the machine asks for a group, for a, um, a cleaning cycle, do the cleaning cycle. When it asks for a, um, a filter change, change the filter. Um, um, the only thing that you might not want to do is the descale cycle, the descale cycle. So that's um, so. There's two cycles. There's the cleaning cycle where you put sort of like cleaning detergent in the porta filter, and the other cycle is called the descale cycle. Uh, that's where you put acid in the water tank, and the machine will run acid through the system. I would advise against that because I've seen a lot of people ruin their machines by running the descale cycle. Um, it kind of ruins the steam boiler, I guess. Um, so I guess better either, either um, 
bring it to a technician like myself or a um or just don't do this the disco cycle the the one thing that you can do is uh, change your filters on time and the filters actually i've heard that they soften your water so they will um, actually make these car cycles unnecessary so keep your your water filter nice and fresh every three months i believe is the recommended um, try to use the cleanest water that you can the australian melbournean tap water should be fine um, but some areas have dirtier water than others um, and yeah the the one thing that you can do to kind of clean the boilers is to flush so you can maybe once a year or once every other year remove this and remove these screws unscrew these uh, two screws and it will actually flush the boilers and you should only do this when the machine is cold and unused uh, and not being used at the moment so it will empty the boilers you can take a look if the boilers are quite dirty uh, maybe do this again but I guess after you close the taps uh, make sure you turn on the machine and wait for it to fill the boilers if you have if that's too confusing don't bother doing it just shoot me a message I'm more than happy to help um, yeah here's the machine one more time looking fabulous I'm sure you'll enjoy it and I will see you tomorrow thanks Rod